Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be reading Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. We're going to be talking about Shaul, Saul, who persecuted the church, and we're also going to be talking about Philip that went down to Samaria. Now, the original manuscripts, the original book of Acts, was not written, divided into chapters and verses. The first half of the first verse of Acts chapter 8 really should be at the end of Acts chapter 7. It just makes a whole lot more sense. However, we'll read it as it is. This is Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Shaul, Saul, was consenting to his death. In context here, we just read about Stephen's death. They just pelted him with stones until he died. It was a very brutal death. And it says here that Saul was consenting to his death. Saul was like standing there with thumbs up, you know, like saying, you know, I consent to the death of Stephen. So once again, to understand this in context, Stephen here is like really the first martyr of the book of Acts, okay? Now there were many other martyrs before Stephen, like the prophets and such, but Stephen is the first martyr in the book of Acts. And so the religious rulers at this time, it's like they had a victory, you know, like they just killed Stephen. So basically, who's next? A great persecution arose against the assembly. Again, the assembly here is the word ecclesia, which is church, that is. So a great persecution arose against the church, which was in Jerusalem in that day. So this is when really the persecution really stepped up because, again, Stephen just died. It was like a victory for these people. It was like, oh, okay, we just killed Stephen. Who's next? Okay, let's go down the list now, okay? So there was great persecution that was coming against the church. They were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except for the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and lamented greatly over him. You know, it's okay to lament over the death of a wonderful man of God. I know some people, when, you know, a great man of God dies, they try to cover up the lamentation by saying, well, he's in a better place now, and so on and so forth. But hey, it says there was great mourning over the death of Stephen here. And so it's okay to mourn. Verse 3, but Saul ravaged the church, the assembly, entering into every house and dragging both men and women off to prison. I mean, this was like the, you know, today we got the Jehovah's Witnesses going door to door. Back in those days, it was Shaul. It was Saul going door to door, dragging away those who believed that Yeshua was Messiah. Door to door persecution then. Therefore, those who were scattered abroad went around preaching the word. So even though they were scattered, even though they ran from the persecution, they still preached the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached to them the Christ, that is the Messiah. Now you need to understand that Samaria was not a very desirable place in the minds of Jews back then because Samaria was, uh, of course, inhabited by the Samaritans and the Samaritans were half-breed Jews. So back then the Jews didn't have much relation with Samaritans. But Philip went down to Samaria to preach about the Messiah. The multitudes listened with one accord all together to the things that were spoken by Philip when they heard and saw the signs which he did. So the signs assisted in validating Philip's word, okay? Now today, there are a lot of people in some churches that claim to produce different signs and wonders. You got to keep in mind that both signs and wonders can be a sign of, of something good, but the greatest sign the greatest sign that God's at work is holy living, is a holy life, okay? There can be lots of healings, lots of miracles, or at least lots of reported or supposed healings and miracles. And yes, they do happen today. But the greatest sign is a holy life. The greatest sign is a life without hypocrisy and without sin. That's the greatest sign for the Lord. For unclean spirits came out of many of those who had them. They came out crying with a loud voice. Many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. There was great joy in that city. 
Remember, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And as I always say, you know, it's very, very important to get hungry and thirsty after God. And you know, this is one of the best ways to do it, to get right into the scriptures, to meditate upon the scriptures. You know, Jesus expects us to, you know, he rebuked people over and over. Like, have you not read? Have you not read? Don't you know? You know, you know, and God expects us to have the word of God always before our eyes, so to speak, always in our mind, always meditating upon the word of God. And as you seek him, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things love you guys